السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه so alhamdulillah rabbil alamin i have uh, sister afreen fatima here from uh, uh, india alhamdulillah who uh, has been a voice of courage and a voice of inspiration personally to me and to everyone that i know and subhanallah in just communicating uh, with afreen the uh, the the calmness and the courage that you radiate at the same time and your calmness is courage is is absolutely incredible but we also don't want to diminish the plight you know by by praising the courage and praising the 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 way you've been composed and the way you've been inspiring don't want to diminish the very real plight that you are uh, in right now and that our brothers and sisters in india um are, are facing right now and it's significant and inshallah ta'ala just for the few moments that we have you know we can uh inshallah talk about some of these things that maybe are not known to everyone else and uh inshallah you can give us our marching orders within the night ta'ala that's what we want inshallah ta'ala for you to keep on telling us what we can do to support you inshallah ta'ala so if we can kind of go back to the beginning um i think you know where were you a few months ago and where are you right now and just on a personal level uh can you kind of tell us about how you go from being an activist mashallah that is raising the voice of the plight of muslims in india and also palestine and so many other things mashallah you've been you've been involved in alhamdulillah but just tell me about like these last few months and then how it sort of reached this point that it's at right now um to be honest like you know uh, actually my father himself uh, is a socio political uh, activist and is a is a community leader in allahabad uh, and uh, i i think uh, i i from him uh, he uh, contested students union election back when he was in university and uh, he did not win the election but then like when i was in university uh, and i just casually asked him once that like you know i'm thinking of contesting because i think i know uh, these the, these are the problems and this is how we may be able to solve it as a as as a students uh, initiative and he was super supportive and then like you know he was super supportive and he always encouraged me and in in everything like you know a lot of times people would in fact be surprised that uh, a muslim father can like you know allow his daughter to be an activist and uh, so for me like i had just i've just finished my masters in linguistics from jawaharlal nehru university and currently i'm working as a researcher with the polis project at the same time uh, i i don't believe that i am an activist or that i would use that label for me but at the same time i think i i, I am someone who just like you know writes and speaks up and uh, who that i i just can't be uh, i just can't be when i know something is wrong and that i just like you know need, feel the need that i need to step up that i need to uh, like you know when the citizenship amendment act was passed that i need to come out of my hostel room or from from my house and be on the street and resist uh and the same is with my father as well i mean he in he i i was in delhi protesting the citizenship amendment act and he was in allahabad protesting the same and uh so the last one month in fact like you know i've been uh, uh, in fact like you know i stopped using twitter facebook instagram i stopped using any social media sites i was preparing for my phd i have in i have my uh, one of my entrance exams tomorrow and i'm not sure if i'd be able to like i would not be able to appear for it uh, so i had been like you know uh, focusing on my academics focusing on my research and uh, i have also like written this this report on hate crimes in the year 2021 so i was basically focusing on a more uh, research oriented way to deal with what is happening in india and the problems that like you know apart from participating in protests mobilizing people talking to people uh 
giving speeches and all of those things i i i felt the need that i need to uh, do something about it in, in in like you know some real action so uh, re- research I, i i thought that i can write so like you know research and uh, writing about these things felt like the best way possible for me and so i've been focusing on all of that i have in fact completed the report that i was compiling on hate crimes against minor- minorities in india and i i hope it's published soon oh. uh so that's what i was doing like you know the past one month or in fact the past 3 4 months and uh then all of a sudden like you know uh, the 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 political climate hasn't like always been very hostile especially for muslims and uh but the past 3 4 months has seen an escalation in in the sense that like you know there are a uh, direct threat from the state itself in in the form of demolitions and we saw it in madhya pradesh we saw it in delhi itself we saw in saw it in uh, rajasthan in several states across uh, india these uh, this this demolition tactic was used to silence muslims uh, muslims in india and uh, so when on 10th of june friday the protests were happening against the objectionable comments that were made against prophet prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was just uh, the the situation was like you know escalating into a very tense situation in the city and uh, as an active member uh, of the civil society in allahabad and uh, also a community leader in allahabad my father like you know uh, police came to our house at around 8:50 pm at night and they asked him to accompany him to uh, them to the police station to talk about what had happened and uh, he 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 readily agreed i mean he he did not like you know there was no resistance from our side because we did not have anything to fear or like you know and in fact i was worried about the dense situation and he was worried of like you know what this a uh, clash between the protesters and the police might lead to and it always almost always leads lead, leads to one thing that is a systemic persecution of muslims and one sided action against muslims lives bodies livelihoods houses everything or no aspect of our lives uh, is uh-huh. left to be secure oh well how how what what do we know about your father your family right now uh what's what are some things that you know we should know in that regard have you heard from your father any anything from your father for your family uh, initially like you know for the first 24 hours of his illegal detention we had no idea where he was placed in which police station if he had been arrested everything that we got to know about him was coming through right wing media channels and that too with sensational headlines and like you know uh, he was being portrayed into this mastermind and the entire right wing media was like you know this 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 media trial was happening and at the same time he was we we, we had no idea where he was uh, he 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 has blood pressure issues he has diabetes and he also has had uh, heart heart issues and he takes insulin injection every night and we were concerned that like you know we we tried to like you know just in fact beg the police to just like you know let him have his medication but we were not able to even establish contact with him on medical grounds and then we got to know that he has been sent to nani central jail which comes in the allahabad district and then i went to meet him my elder brother went to meet him he was he said he was fine he said like you know stay calm don't worry i am fine uh and given that he is someone who is, has been politically and socially active he he's aware of how long this process can be mm. and he was just like you know trying to be strong for us and like you know letting us know that it's going to be a long battle so like you know don't exhaust yourself in the first in, in the very first round and 
then yesterday morning my mother tried to go and meet him in the police in, in the jail and the jailer said that there's no inmate named javed mohammad in 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 the jail and so we were shocked and surprised and we had no idea where he had been taken to and again we got to know through like you know local media that uh, news news reports that uh, he's been shifted to some other district and there was no official communication that was made to us as they like, you know family or to the lawyers and so the 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 whole like you know everything that they're doing is not to like you know because he's guilty or like you know that the police has a lot of uh, proofs against him and they'd be able to prove that he is guilty that they also know that they won't be able to the idea is to make the process the punishment and this is a, a form of a collective punishment not just to him for speaking up and not just to uh, to to give a clear message to him that he cannot be doing what he had been doing to the entire community to his family to me that uh, this is something that will not be allowed in india well i'm not trying to free him bring him home protect you and your family and allow you to face this with great courage as you as you have been and uh, keep you firm and steadfast and and your entire family i know this isn't easy for anyone in the family even if it's just your father um may Allah free him who's been jailed but obviously uh the entire family suffers as a result of that so may Allah free him and and bring him back to you and protect you all Allahumma amin and and afraid this the sort of uh collective punishment the punishment being the process and especially home demolitions you know subhanallah as i was watching that happen um like many of us in the world when we were watching your home being demolished um and um you know trying to find a way to to get to you and i know a lot of people were trying to find a way to get to you um at that time and we're fearing sort of what comes next one of the reasons being is that it resembles quite a bit what israel has been doing to the palestinians right like this idea of using home demolitions as a tactic of intimidation and collective silence and punishment when did this start happening in india and did you all know that this was about to happen in some way i mean what can you tell us about this new tactic of home demolitions in india of course uh, it resembles a lot uh, with uh, the way israeli forces in the the settler colonial uh, occupation of israel is doing in palestine and uh, So the reason of it resembling is the Israeli model so much is that uh, the the Hindu supremacists in, in fact take inspiration from Israel and uh, not just Israel in fact every oppressive uh, fascist regime that had been there in 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 the in history from Nazi Germany from Rwanda from uh, like you know from Israel and uh, so that so. the 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 idea of demolishing as a form of uh, de- demolitions as a form of collective punishment is not a new idea it's it's not a new punishment that has been just introduced and my house is of my first house that has been demolished and but i do hope it is the last inshallah inshallah so this has been happening for a very very long time it has like goes back to several decades but uh, it's outright uh, outright calls for demolition as an act of punishment towards the muslim community and in fact members of the majority community enjoying and hooting over uh, demolitions happening of muslim houses and livelihoods is uh, is is it's it's outright presence is new and it's outright celebration is new uh so uh the i i think the the biggest example would be the northeastern state of assam in india which is in in a very serious citizenship crisis uh, in the term in the sense that uh, over thousands and thousands of muslims have been rendered citizenless citizenless and uh they've been facing demolitions and evictions uh and being called illegal migrants in their own homeland and it's exact same model of israel 
that like you know people who own the land are being evicted from their own land and their houses are being demolished by uh, the government forces and administration and uh, like you know i think around 6 months 7 months ago just last year itself uh we we heard the news of this massive eviction drive that happened in assam and uh shaheed moinul haq was ma- martyred by the security forces and uh because he 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 stood there and he tried to defend his home and uh and then so this idea of punishment is not new new to us it like in the past 3 months it has escalated more so with bjp uh, coming into power in several states of india and uh, announcing that they are here this is their announcement towards like you know to 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 the people of of the country to the to the majority community that they have uh, made into people who who enjoy the plight of muslims who in fa- in, in fact uh enjoy not just our persecution but uh, like you know when it's live telecast the whole idea that my house was live telecasted on television and every brick coming down was was on show was to in fact like you know stroke the the egos and the satisfaction of the hindu majority that that the bjp is doing what and i feel that it's, it's it's also in a way it also in a way disempowers the muslim community it pushes us further back economically financially in in every way and uh, the biggest problem in all of it, all of this uh, the most disturbing thing in all, in all of this is is has been that they 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 target the poorest of the poor in all of this the the the, the most marginalized even in the muslim community the people who 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 just have like a room for that they call their home and a small shop that they make on from on a day to day basis and that is what is demolished and that is what is taken away from them on, so no please go ahead please so and like you know this this idea of uh, enjoying and like you know ruining uh, or seeing our bill our our houses and like you know physical structure of our houses go down gives them pleasure and i i believe that is the sole reason why that we have been trying to let them know that uh, it's just the structure that has been demolished it's it's just that if they think that they've they they they've scared us or that they can like you know demolish uh, our faith or our belief that a better day will not follow that they, they're completely wrong allah akbar allah akbar and last parts are keep you strong ya rab you know and, and subhanallah when, when i was talking about this when i'm talking about this to a lot of people i think the scope of this is not immediately apparent to to many that are not in india right now you know the fact that over 200 million muslims are there and again this is over one tenth of our ummah over one tenth not one tenth over one tenth of our ummah is there and many will will come back and say you know what are you talking about genocide you know even even though we see genocide alerts that are being passed by international bodies now you know immediately the comeback will be well there are plenty of muslims that are living just fine and this is very similar to the tactics of Israel with the Palestinians too right like they'll show you this uh small community or whatever it is of arab israelis or palestinians that seem to be doing well and say see we we're a democracy right and the irony of the largest democracy in the world and the only democracy in the middle east both of these in quotation marks uh really mastering the art of apartheid and the art of disenfranchising 
uh, in this fashion, both against you know Muslim the Muslim community entirely in India, but other minorities as well, and, and definitely in Palestine as well. Um, but people will come back and say, you know, it doesn't seem to be all the Muslims in India. And so you point out the genocidal speech that is being given by mainstream politicians. And it's like, well, you know, that's just one fringe person. And we've seen this play out over and over and over again, right? It's the downplaying until it becomes too severe for us to combat it at this point. But what is it like being a Muslim in India right now? And what what is the threat of genocide really like? Like, what are we really looking at with the Muslims in India in this regard? And what would you say to the skeptic that that says this is just happening to a few Muslims that are causing problems? I I, I think uh, the the only way I can frame a sentence that can be serious enough for people to understand that the threat is really really real is that it's absolutely serious it's it is serious and uh the alerts that are coming out from several rights organizations and in for in fact from from people like me also uh is 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 not an exaggeration of what is happening in india i mean like you know when when if, if one sits down and try to compile a list of acts and a list of things that the government, that the Indian state and it's the the state and non-state actors along with the judiciary, along with the law enforcement, along with development authorities as of late uh, are doing like, you know, several volumes of a book can be compiled, but the list will just go on. Uh, and I think that the, the, the threat that the Indian Muslim community is experiencing is not just of a genocide that is to follow. It is of a perpetual state of genocide that the Indian Muslim community is being forced to live in. We are, in fact, living in, an, in, in, a, in a perpetual state of genocide. I'm sorry, am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, so image, your image is a bit frozen, but, but we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, you know, there's not just politicians who are giving speeches and like, you know, or like, you know, some fringe monk in a saffron robe giving speeches it's 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 this in it's this it's this massive ecosystem that is thriving on anti-muslim hate and islamophobia in india and it's 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 scary to the extent that you can not know who who is not a part of this ecosystem because everyone is the entire i mean there's just two categories in the hindu majority those who actively participate in the violence and hate against Muslims and those who are just silent spectators and the active participants exceed uh, in in massive numbers the the silent spectat spectators and both are equally uh, serious categories for 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 the for people from for members of the hindu community to silently watch over muslims being lynched pogroms being planned where muslims are butchered in broad daylight in the streets of of this country uh muslim detained arrested on false fake cooked up charges to to teach muslims a lesson especially those who are politically and aware and active and speaking our houses being demolished uh, several several propaganda ideas that resemble the nazi germany love jihad and and uh, is jihad and corona jihad i mean everyone in the world saw the way 
uh, the tablig jamaat was made into a scapegoat and blamed for covid-19 in india uh, when when it was a pandemic and the muslim community was blamed for the pandemic and so it's not just one thing that is happening i mean muslim women were sold online on an on a, on a virtual auction and uh, calls for abduction rape direct call for murder taking up arms it's 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 normalized to the extent that it's it is it's scary for us and like you know people can can come and say that oh you you you're, you're giving like you know that you that there are so many who are just like sitting in their houses and nothing is happening to them just 10 days ago my family was sitting in my house and there was nothing happening to my house just 10 days ago right so the threat is imminent it's real and it's going to be disastrous if people do not take action we do not have the like you know i i earlier i i used to say that the world needs to keep a close eye on india i can't say that anymore it's it's not you you the world needs to act up before it turns into another nazi germany or another rwanda and then like you know people of the world will say that how come how did this happen and never again you 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 know we are serious and we are not exaggerating we are like you know in fact whatever i'm saying is an understatement to the reality of what is happening in india right now and what's what's going on with this you know sort of the hijab bans right so some states have banned hijab and obviously there's now you know we've seen this in other places it starts with a nationwide call to ban hijab and this of course coupled with the insult of the prophet signs and then with the very real policies that are taking place here as a young muslim woman who wears hijab and was at the forefront of challenging the full scope of what that insulting of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam meant how does that make you feel and what do we take from that you know the sudden uh pivot to this next level of religious rhetoric but bans on hijab and trying to ban sort of that muslim identity from public uh it's not just the hijab i mean all aspect of islamic faith are being targeted are being banned Uh, the azan is being banned uh this 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 ramzan itself in allahabad uh several police ma- policemen would come to the mosques and ask uh, the the muezzins to blow the uh, the volume of the azan and uh, to in fact even like you know just shut it down remove the loudspeakers uh mosques are of course uh, demolished in, in broad daylight uh there's babri and there's several others babri was made into a political issue by the right wing and so people know about it but uh there are several other mosques that are targeted that are demolished and uh like you know every uh, physical or uh, every public embodiment of islamic faith is being targeted and uh, hijab is one of them and it's the most recent one uh, it started in the southern state of karnataka where uh, college going girls were not allowed to uh, wear hijab in their classrooms and uh, it's it started with them sitting in protest outside of their classrooms for over a week for and like you know begging and pleading and protesting uh the 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 school authorities to allow them to wear their hijab and when that did not happen they 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 went to the court and then the court also judicially sanctions apartheid it judicially uh, excludes thousands of muslim women muslim girls who had been wearing hijab to their classrooms who had been practicing their faith to just like you know that you can't you either practice your faith or you pursue education 
and uh, so in all of this uh, like you know it is a scary thought just just imagining that i might have to remove my hijab and walk out if i do have to or that i just have to stay inside my house for the rest of my life because i can't wear my hijab in public and uh, i mean it's it, it it's it's to do with the presence of islamic symbol and islamic identity in public space and it also has to do with this voyeuristic gaze of the hindu majority the muslim woman's body has been sexualized to think that uh, the the act of unveiling is 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 romanticized right. uh, and that is why like you know apps and websites like the sully deals and the gully by were, were created in the first place and it is a very disturbing and it's a very uh from it's a very it's, it's it's a very disturbing thought i mean i i can't imagine i mean my my sisters can't imagine my mother can't imagine we just we just can't imagine a day where like you know we might be like you know that someone might pull our hijab off the the the, the idea just sends shivers down and not protect and it has been and and it has been made a reality for some of us for some of muslim in karnataka and the way the the right wing ecosystem has been i mean it's just going to expand to several other parts and it's 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 going to come to every one of us may Allah protect you protect all of our sisters there and subhanallah i mean i think this is one problem that we also have as a muslim umma is that we celebrate the heroes we celebrate muskan may Allah bless her mashallah putting the fist up in the face of all of those that were trying to prevent her from wearing her hijab we celebrate afreen today and mashallah you you're, you're an icon to us but uh sometimes i think we turn away uh from our sisters and brothers after some time passes and unfortunately these things become more widespread and become more enshrined in policy and we don't want that to happen um we want to be with you all bi idnillah ta'ala throughout this may Allah protect you protect our sisters protect our brothers again this is an attempt to remove islam from public remove the masjid remove the hijab remove islam and and in the process satisfy uh the cravings of fascism and subhanallah like you said it, it's an ugly reality but the majority also needs to be taken to task here that it's not it's not okay to be passive uh it's not okay to just watch this happen and to say i don't agree with it uh this has reached that alarming level at this point that requires more action so my 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 questions i mean i just i don't want to hold you too long um too much longer um what do you say to the muslim world to your muslim brothers and sisters that are saying you know well this is happening here and here and I'm hearing about this situation that situation i don't know how i can meaningfully help and i don't know how serious this really is what are your marching orders for us as an ummah uh, for inshallah ta'ala to for us to, to move inshallah ta'ala whatever whoever is watching this i i i don't think that i i i am someone who can be giving orders or Uh, i i i mean like you know i might or and i i i i i just think that like you know my uh, my my request to all of my muslim brothers and sisters would be to of course first keep all of us indian muslims in your prayers and just just make dua for us at the same time i think like you know maybe ask your governments to take some action against india to to do something i mean i don't really know what all can be done and what cannot be done uh 
but there needs there there needs to be a, a way for for the indian government to be held accountable for everything that it's doing and uh for it to be held answerable and for it to be uh and for it to be told loud and clear that this is something that cannot be tolerated uh when when several muslim countries issued uh, statements against the the comments that were made against prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the entire muslim community in india uh like you know we were all happy uh, and like you know uh, the the our liberal allies and everyone were like you know they the, the muslim countries only care about the prophet and not about the people the quote and quote liberal allies of the muslim community in india were like you know saying that oh but they don't care about you and like you know the the persecution that's happening and it's just about uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, just it's, it's just about the religion but like you know we we were we we had that like you know the moment to relieve that something is happening that someone is holding this government accountable that someone is holding its 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 spokesperson who are like you know abusing the community our faith our prophets sallallahu alaihi wasallam day in and day out and gaining trps over it and like you know creating peddling hate over it and we were just relief that something is happening and so i believe that that something can happen again and i believe that uh, the indian government can be held accountable it can be uh, stopped it it can be like you know alerted that what they are doing is wrong and is and that they will be held accountable for it and that they can't get away with it so okay. i i to be like you know there's no specific way that i i i i there's there's no specific way that uh i can tell that they like, you know that might you know the magic wand that might make everything disappear and like you know it's 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 a, it's a process of over seven decades that is unfolding and has become this monster today and it it will take a lot of time and as for the indian muslim community we are willing to fight it until the very end and we will be strong and we are with each other we are like you know understanding the importance of that sense of community within ourselves as indian muslims and i i just hope and pray that the entire ummah understands that sense of community and stand, stands up for their brothers and sisters everywhere not just in india but in china in palestine in in every other part of the world where muslims are being persecuted simply because they are muslims jazakumullah khair may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and protect you and protect all of you and uh, i think as you know you know subhanallah as i've told you we're making dua for you but also that Uh, we will in short time continue to put out community action alerts for people um, to sort of follow the guidance of their local Indian Muslim activist groups when that exists and to put pressure uh, certainly pressure 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 uh, sanctions accountability when that can happen in short time to continue to raise our collective voice and to continue to keep our collective duras and to not just pass this off as uh you know another just flashpoint for a moment but this is this is something that has been in the works for a very long time and unfortunately has the risk to become uh you know one of the the worst genocides uh that that we have seen in in our history and so we pray that that's not the case i have one more question for you afreen uh, you you know there are a lot of young muslims watching this as well what have you been doing to keep yourself sustained with with faith with iman what have you been what have you been doing to keep yourself strong with your faith uh to fill your heart to fill your mind um i think uh it has a lot to do with uh 
it, it's like you know uh it's it's my ammi like you know who pestered us into <laughs> offering our namaz <laughs> and like you know uh, reading quran every day and uh and like you know the when when we heard the the news that uh, when when we f- saw the first uh bulldozer taking on our house the the, the one of the first things that my mother said was that we will we'll, does not matter it's just a building i mean my brother was in mind at that time he was like you know reminding us of all the all the times that we've had in that home and uh, but my mother was like you know calm and she just said that and she just sat on his janamas and she was just offering her namaz and like you know it, it's 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 enough for us the act of worship it's like you know i i i said in one of the interviews that i will not cry i, I will not shed a single tear but my allah knows how many tears i've shed to him and uh, it's he who who gives this calm and it's 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 one of the like you know the, this this whole idea of like you know doing dikr especially like the entire day when my father was being called mom and everything the only thing that we were repeating was husband allah when you husband allah when and so like you know there's this this calm in it and there's and there's strength in it yeah. and it's 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 the belief that we know that we like, you know whatever injustice is happening will be brought to justice if not here then in here hereafter jazakumullah <laughs> khairan for everything and and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and protect you we ask Allah azza wa jalla to to protect you to protect your family to release your father to sustain you with sincerity and steadfastness and and continued strength may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you a better home in jannah may Allah azza wa jalla join you with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you and your family in al firdaus al a'la may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the suffering of our brothers and sisters in india and all over the world may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring out of this ummah what is pleasing to him and allow us to unite upon that which is pleasing to him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be like that one strong body with the beating heart of that love of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you sister afreen to continue to go forward and to lead us and your family to lead us and and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to properly support you allahumma amin jazakumullah khairan uh, for everything and for for uh, taking the time even i know subhanallah you've been having to do this a lot but just know that you've inspired a lot of us and inshallah ta'ala we will we will heed the call uh, that's come from you inshallah ta'ala as well as our brothers and sisters in, in india inshallah ta'ala uh, to continue to to be by your side inshallah jazakumullah khairan may love bless you assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh